Hey there everyone, it's Reclaimer with 2XP Gaming. Today I'm expanding my Unify home network with the Unify security gateway pictured here on the screen. Retails for $139. Let's go ahead and get started. So folks, you might recall from a previous video that I have a kind of a bit of an obsession with home networking. Uh, I started a build of a home network probably two years ago, close to three years ago, almost immediately after I moved into my home, uh, and it hasn't stopped. So I've since adopted a Unify access point, the ACLR. Then I decided I wanted a Unify cloud key, so I got that and I adopted that into the network. And now I want some additional metrics and control. I want to really fully adopt the Unify system in my home. So I purchased this Unify Security Gateway. It retails for about $139. Um, your mileage may vary on that. And it really helps you uh, get more immersed into the Unify uh realm of a uh, product. So this really gives you a lot more control over your home network. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, I shot a little bit of video while I was actually adopting or attempting to adopt the USG uh, into my network. And one of the things that I used because I have my existing network, if you recall from my cloud key video, um, I, I used um, my own type of network here uh, and I have like different IP ranges and all that fun stuff. Uh, I utilized this video from Quick Tech Solutions LLC uh, and I think his video was really good, really detailed. He made a mistake, probably made the same mistake I did, uh, but he, he corrected it, he corrected it in the video. Uh, I really enjoy uh, Quick Tech Solutions uh, videos on adopting Unify products into your home network. I'm gonna go ahead and hit subscribe to that channel and I suggest that you do too if you care about home networking. And by the way, you can subscribe to our channel too if you like our videos. Uh, but anyway, I utilize this how to adopt a USG into existing network. Super, super helpful. Uh, and let me just go ahead and ingest some of the video that I shot while I was actually putting the USG into service. We're currently waiting for the USG to get a firmware update prior to me adopting it. So just wanna kinda of walk you through what I've done so far before I take you back to the computer video. So the USG is currently down here. Now my Edge Rider X was sitting here and what I had to do, and I'm gonna to link to a really good video that helped me with this, is my, my network's already set up and I needed to get the USG on the same um, range as the cloud key. Um, so 192.168.whatever.whatever. .whatever .whatever. Um, but by default, this is at 192.168.1.1. So what I had to do was first I connected the USG to the laptop directly and I used DHCP and I was able to log into 192.168.1.1 and get in there. And then I SSH'd into the, uh, to the USG and changed its default IP so that it would access what I currently have um, set up for the cloud key. So then I allowed that to change. I disconnected it from DHCP. I set a static IP address in here, for example, 192.168.100.2, that's just an example. Uh, and then I was able to access um, uh, the router from there to confirm the changes were good. So now what I've done is I've connected the USG into my switch and I am now uh, able to access, uh, utilizing a, a still static IP address, I'm now able to access my cloud key. So what I'm doing is I'm updating the firmware in the USG. What I will then do is adopt the USG uh, into the system, into my network. After about five minutes, it restarted. And then I noticed up in the, uh, the controller that it had reset the IP address that I already set using SSH. But now that I had the updated firmware, I was able to go in and just set it in the configuration utility. So I had to connect it again um, and you know connect to the router at 192.168.1.1, go in, and then with the GUI, I could set the actual IP and um, the IP ranges and everything like that. So then I did that. Once I saved it, I confirmed I could connect to it. Now I have the USG connected into my switch and patch panel. We have the WAN connected and I have pending adoption. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if we can get it adopted. All right, everybody. So there was just a, a little bit of video of me ingesting uh, the USG, adopting the USG into service in my home network. One of these days, I'm gonna wall mount that rack. 
And I'm probably going to move it and then wall mount it. But one of these days that will happen. Never ending, right? So now I'd like to show you kind of what the uh, cloud controller setup looks like now that the USG is working alongside the access point and the cloud controller. So I'm already logged in to my uh, Unify cloud controller here. And in the past, the internet capacity section, the USG utilization, the network utilization section was blanked out. Um, the switches was here. I don't have any Unify switches, unfortunately. Um, but it does recognize that I have nine wired clients on my unmanaged TP link switch. Shows me my access point and throughput. And then I have my uh, clients and guests if, if that would be available. Now you can see that I have a high amount of association failures. That was during the switchover where all the DHCP leases needed to be renewed and they kept trying to be renewed. Didn't work out so well. Now it's saying that everything is good uh, and that my clients are getting a poor Wi-Fi experience. I'm probably going to have to... Um, take a look into this one client it's it's annoying me that my I'm not getting like a hundred percent here uh, but that's just beside the point so let's go ahead and move into statistics all right what's really cool about this is um, it is showing me my wireless clients but I'm going to be able to show wired clients as well um, with some of this actually let me go into the devices now all right so here are my devices right we've got the USG we've got the AP uh, connected here, we can see the firmware, the uptime, all that fun stuff. Moving down to clients, now there's something here that wasn't here before, and those are a bunch of MAC addresses. Those are all my wired clients, and I'm going to need to go through and figure out what these clients are so I can give them some type of alias. So when I'm looking at my, uh, my metrics, my network metrics, I know what devices are using, what type of bandwidth, are we getting any type of uptime issues, any type of association failures, what's happening with those devices. So you are gonna to have to go through, so just be advised, you may have to go through, once you have all these nice wired devices, um, you're probably gonna to have to assign them with aliases. Now you can see here that I am experiencing some Wi-Fi issues currently. Um, mainly, it looks like these are my Amazon Echo devices. I'm not sure what's up with that. I'm gonna to have to take a look. Um, now that I've transposed my existing network over to more of a Unify setup, um, I have to check and see how are they connecting to the IoT network? Are the firewall rules that I set up in the Unify controller messing with uh, anything in particular? And then this, this Tux um, client here, this is my touchscreen security panel. Ever since this was installed, it's getting a zero Wi-Fi experience score. Even though it's been connected for 27 days, it's giving me a DNS timeout, but I know the thing's working appropriately. So I think I might have to do some additional troubleshooting there. But I really enjoy that I have uh, some additional uh, information here uh, about my wired clients. I can't wait to play around with that a little bit. If I go to insights, uh, same thing as before. I really think I want to get a Unify switch so I can go to switch stats. Uh, but let me just go back again to my dashboard here. And it looks like I have a couple new things on the dashboard as well, like IP load says is excellent. I can perform a speed test. Let's go ahead and do that now. So you can see now, luckily, coming right in from the WAN, I'm getting what I'm paying for. Um, you know, I'm not really having any loss right at the WAN port um, at the USG. So the speed test has shown me 97.4 down, 10 megabit up. Cool beans, cool beans. But if I go over here to the uh, the sidebar, you can see that I have gigabit uh, links, which is, I have cat six cable connected there. So I do have gigabit links, uh, which is perfect. So we have our WAN and we have LAN one connected. LAN two is not connected. If I click on my networks here, you can see that it is serving my networks. I do have clients connected uh, to my IOT network, no clients on my guest network currently, and I have 14 clients on my home network. Ports, showing everything good. Additional configuration, additional stats. Pretty neat. So I'm really excited uh, that I've now adopted this USG into my existing network without having to do anything super crazy like set up everything all over again. As you saw in the videos when I was down at the actual network rack, it did require a little bit of finagling to go in, change the IP range of the USG from stock, uh, and then get that all set up. And you, as you saw in my video, learn from my mistake. If you upgrade the software, 
after you update the IP range, there's a very good chance it's going to reset the IP range back to 192.168.1.1. So just be prepared for that. This was kind of just a little overview of my experience and, and what it looks like now that I have the USG adopted. Definitely compare this to the video uh, when I adopted the cloud key. You can see that there are some things here that weren't here before. Yeah, pretty cool. So if you have questions about my experience with the USG, provisioning it into my existing home network, um, how I'm liking it so far, I mean, I've only had it for a day. So, you know, if you have any questions, comments, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos of ours. Give it a like if you liked it. If you didn't like it, go ahead and dislike it. I don't care. Uh, until next time, this is Reclaimer with 2XP Gaming. We'll see you soon.